What is an apothem? Part one by Jeff Simpson. If you draw a circle and then uh, draw a radius and then draw a chord and that chord crosses the radius at a right angle. So we got a 90 degree angle at the intersection there. The chord is cut into two equal parts. In other words, it's bisected. The radius is also cut into two parts. This part over here is called the sagitta. That's Latin for arrow. Well, because it looks kind of like an arrow shot from a bow. This part over here is called the apothem. The apothem can face any direction. If you connect the center to the cord with a radius and another radius, that's two radii, you have an isosceles triangle. That means that two of the sides are of equal length, and the apothem goes right through the middle of it. If you make copies of this and rotate them, you have a square that's inscribed in the circle. Notice the square touches the circle at four points. The center of the circle is actually the same as the center of the square. The radius of the circle is the same as the radius of the square. And the apothem of the circle is the same as the apothem of the square. The apothem connects the center of the square to the chord that is part of the square. The apothem connects the center of the square to the midpoint of the flat side. There's the midpoint right in the middle. The apothem does not connect the center of the square to a vertex of the square. That would be the radius. But instead of a square, if we inscribe a, a regular pentagon in the circle, all of its five sides being equal, the apothem connects the center of the pentagon to the midpoint of the flat side. Or if you inscribe a regular hexagon in the circle, all of its six sides being equal, the apothem connects the center of the hexagon to the middle of the flat side. The apothem is perpendicular to the flat side, so there's a right angle there, 90 degrees. Again, you can use two radii to create an isosceles triangle, of which two sides are equal. And actually, this triangle has three sides that are equal. The apothem cuts the triangle into two congruent right triangles. Congruent means they have the same shape and the same size. And since they're right triangles, they each contain a 90 degree angle. <clears throat> Something interesting, the, the apothem and the radius and the sine, you probably don't know about the sine, it's a half chord. So the apothem, radius, and sine go together to create a right triangle. You'll be seeing more of this in trigonometry. Pentagons and hexagons are both polygons. Polygon comes from two Greek words meaning many angles. Polygon. Pentagon has five angles and the hexagon has six angles. Triangles and rectangles are polygons because they also have many angles and many sides, so they're polygons. A square, though, is a regular polygon because it follows a regulation. Well, the rule is that the sides must be of equal length and the angles must all be equal. So a square is a 
not just a polygon, it's a regular polygon. This regular pentagon follows the same regulation, equal sides and equal angles, so it's a regular polygon. This pentagon here, though, is not a regular pentagon because the five sides are not all equal. Here are three more regular polygons that we can use to summarize what we know so far about apothems. We've got a heptagon with seven sides, an octagon with eight, and an onagon with nine sides. Each regular polygon has an apothem showing the distance from the center to the side and each apothem is perpendicular to the side that it meets, so there's a 90 degree angle. An apothem, as we mentioned before, is also the distance from the center of a circle to the midpoint of a chord. There's actually lots more to know about apothems, but this is a good start, so that's the um, that's it for the part one video. Thanks for watching, and please share these ideas with other people who can benefit from them.